I mean, the first thing I got to ask is, has Aubrey Venmoed you any sort of reparations yet? No, but um, I'm not opposed to it. You know, if you got an in there, um, I'm not opposed to putting a little Venmo action out on my socials. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's start with where things ended, because the two big things you do at Tribal Council, right? First, you declare hey, everything that the Sega said was a lie. I was on the bottom. And then also you play your shot in the dark. I would imagine both of those actions were fairly premeditated. So I'm curious, was there any sort of conversation or moment that you picked up on prior to Tribal Council that made you think, okay, it's probably definitely going to be me. Let me sort of throw some Hail Marys here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, getting to camp stopped, right? And I'm I'm like doing my very simple math of there are six here and seven there. So whatever name they come back with, 99.9% .9 is going to be the name. I mean, you're literally sitting in a majority, plus we're a 3v3. So mm -hmm. whatever Sega name they say, they're getting three additional votes. And whatever Nami name they say, they're getting three additional votes. So like it is a majority. So the second they came back with my name, I was like... Yep, still in my pocket. Cool, cool. So I had a pretty good feeling initially when I knew like a hundred percent, like there is no sway, is when I had other people from other tribes saying like one in six, you know, pants are tied, one in six. And when someone from another tribe tells you like, I want to work with you, but like one in six, you you know, you are like, you're beyond gone at that point. So what did you clock was the reaction of everyone else with this big declaration you make? Because on the one hand, uh, as you mentioned, despite possibly Hunter being the deaf ears, uh, deaf ears that it fell upon, you know, there were plenty of other people to listen. I could also imagine on the other side, you had the Seagas being like, Mariah, what are you doing? Obviously, it didn't end up being your saving grace. But did you get a sense in the moment as to what the temperature was from that bomb you dropped? So I was actually really surprised there was that much of a bomb. I think if you look over at Q's face, he's just like, what? And I'm like, oh my God, the name you got from my tribe, I'm on the bottom? That's wild. So I, I, I didn't think it would be that big of a bomb, but the temperature was definitely a little bit chaotic. I mean, you had the Seagas who at that point, like I knew they were voting for me. They knew that they were voting for me. So I don't think they were shocked that I dropped it. But everyone else was like, oh, damn, like not only do they have a bottom, but these these players are lying to our faces. And all five of them have been working in like a synchronized like attack on the other whatever many number of people there are. So it definitely felt like a little bit of a turning point against it, the Seagulls who had been lying. Like, what what do you do with that moving forward? Yeah, let's talk about that synchronized attack. What made Sega decide that that was the front to go in on? Because you could also have done the complete opposite thing, right? Mm -hmm. You play the mole, you say, oh, I'm on the bottom, use me, and then take that information back. What made Sega decide in that moment going into Mergatory, like, all right, let's keep our lips shut about not only the gem boat, but it seems like pretty much everything. And that included your own involvement in it. Yeah. Well, I think everyone was playing to some degree an individual game, even though we're together. And something that I don't think a lot of people really think critically enough about is those journeys. So mm -hmm. in the journeys, it's not just about the advantages. It's about the connections that you make over there. So whether, you know, like Tim's going on this journey and Hunter and Q and Marie is going on this journey with Tevin and he was there with... um Chalinski. Um, and then even like Ben is there with Liz and Banu. And especially because one tribe was just decimated, most of the people on those journeys are intact. Mm -hmm. Most of those people in those relationships are now on that beach together. So because of that, it became a little bit more complicated to navigate. And especially like us going in as five with three in the middle, like you're not going to as Yanu, you're not going to look to pick up strays. You're looking to choose a side. Because mm. three people, you know, if you get one stray, you get two strays. Great, you're at five, you're at four. That's that's not really enough in a, in a mess, in a gaggle of 13 castaways 
to make that huge difference. So at least for the first vote, it was more about convincing Yanu which way to pull. And, you know, who knows later on, but at least for Murgatory, it, it felt very much like a, we need them to choose our side. So we obviously was referencing it before with the Aubrey comment. What was your reaction to, from our perspective, like the way you were being targeted, which seemed to kind of boil down to, oh, she knows the show better than all, a lot of the other people that were left vulnerable. That makes her dangerous. She's the Sika to take out. I, I was so fed up with it. I was so annoyed at it because I mean, that's like a, that's a really big thing for me is that, you know, people look at me, people like, see, like, I have glasses, I'm duck footed, I walk weird, I have a lisp, like, like, they see all these things about me, and they put me in this box of like, she has to be the strategist, she has to be thinking, and I'm like, what have I done? What What is my offense? And they're like, I just get that vibe. And I'm like, you're gonna lose the game. If you're going off of your preconceived notions, if you're going off and just saying, I think this because I think this and not listening to what people are showing you, not being perceptive to the way people are acting, not reacting and playing the game, you're going, you, that's a one-way ticket home. But for me, for me at least too, it, it was also very wild because it was a two-way conversation. And right before I had said Aubrey was my favorite player, Kua told me his favorite player, which is, you know, the very non-intimidating Jeremy Collins. <laughs> so you could imagine my reaction when I hear them, the man who told me Jeremy Collins is his favorite player to be like, yeah, her favorite player is Aubrey. Like, that's just too much. That's too much here. Oh my God. Well, speaking on that, obviously Mergatory brings about a bunch of new faces. And we saw like fits and starts, right? You talk about Q. Venus was someone that you click with before you were inevitably turned against each other. What were some of those key new connections that you made with all these people you ended up now suddenly sharing a beach with? Well, Venus, I really wanted to work with Venus. You see, like I sat next to her when we're making our introductions, like we were talking, we were chatting, like, like I really wanted to work with Venus before we got what is the worst rock draw in all history. But apart from that, I, I really love Tevin. Him and I had a really great connection out there. I could just tell he was a very warm, he, you could tell he was a hard player, but an authentic one. And that's someone who not only I, I would want to play the game with, but seemed really fun to play the game with. So that was another one. And surprisingly to Hunter, Hunter and I had, he's a huge gamer. You, you can tell by like, just like his everything in the game. Like we're watching this man like beast challenges. So clearly he knows the game. And him and I kind of talked about like board games, video games, like stuff like that. Because I think we, we both in that sense had that kind of like fun, out, kind of more introverted, kind of more just like thinking about game mindset. So that also segues into, of course, the Liz in the room. Now, you two had the connection on the benches during that one challenge, but this is something you and I even talked about out there, right? Of Okay, what happens when you both make the merge? So what ended up happening there? We talked a little, we talked a little bit, but I'll admit I was a little offended she didn't take me on that journey. So <laughs> I, I got there and I'm like, mm, like, I see you talking to Ben. I'm okay with Ben. But if you're talking to Ben and you're really hard on, on Ben, you know, I just voted for this man. <laughs> so maybe that's not my cup of tea at this moment. Mm. Well, speaking of those Sega notes, I want to go back there because something that Jem told me last week that I was a little surprised by is obviously you were left out of the vote against her. And so our assumption is like, OK, Jem is Mariah's closest ally. She told me that actually she thought you and Maria were more of a pair. Talk to me about that. No, Maria. Maria out there is really great from day one. It was like an like Eminem. We're not doing that. It's not happening. Not happening this season. So I can definitely see where that perception came from. And even at the merge, like Maria was probably the most upset of like this, like this tidal wave is coming. Like one person can't stop it. So yeah. I, I definitely see that out there. And it, it was a little bit like a, a gun is drawn situation because we didn't lose. So the strategy was kept on kind of the DL. And it wasn't like we never had an opportunity to go out and test. And we don't want to be like, you're my number one to have someone to say, oh, they told me that. 
So because of that, I thought that Maria and Jem were very close. Maria thought that Jem and I were close. And Jem thought like Maria and me. So it was like this like weird circle of no one knows where we stand. Mm. So let's say that you do end up surviving the vote from last night. Was your plan to keep riding Sega strong? Or was there that little kernel in your head of like, got to get that revenge. I'm on the bottom. Let me flip when I get the chance. Absolutely not. Like going in Murgatory, I knew Murgatory is its own beast because it's such chaos. And when you have a literal majority sitting at a table, like whatever happened, the name out is the name out. Mm. So for that, my goal was to just be able to survive it. And that the best path forward really looked like and kind of still does look like getting those Janus to choose your side. Because that's ultimately what happened is Janu went with Nami. And it doesn't matter if I lose by four votes or 10 votes, I still lose. So getting them to at least vote with us for one vote was my goal for Murgatory. But after that, like I said, I I like Tevin. I liked Hunter. Um, I, yeah, according to Jam, like Marie and I were seemed pretty close. So maybe I could have gotten in with the queue of it all. Uh, probably not, but maybe worked something there. Mm. So I would say no. What was your reaction from Jem? Because I'm assuming she told you pretty soon after you ended up getting voted out about her not only having the idol, but her incidentally leading you on this wild goose chase for so many days. I I was floored. Like the fan in me was so impressed. I was like, damn girl, like you got us so good. And then I remember that ant fights on me and I'm like, could you have done it somewhere else? Like it, it was such, it was so funny. Although I got to the point of, if you look at all, everything shown, I am not digging. <laughs> I am standing there. I want to see people dig and see what they find. But by like day two, I was even thinking, I'm like, should I just drop a bead in there so we can be done with this? Like, if you're going to plant a fake clue, at least plant a fake idol. So like, we we can just call it a wrap and we can all be like, ah, we found something that's so wild. And then never talk about it again. Mm. Talk to me about your relationship with Ben for a second. Because I would say that like, the two of you are probably the more quirky members of Sega. We even see last week that you're like, I love the guy. He's the most like extroverted, entertaining personality I've seen. And I'm so threatened by him. And then you talk this week about how you felt so bad voting for him because he was one of the most kind people to you out there. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with Sega is we never got tested. So, uh, and in a way, unlike Nami, where at least there's moving and shaking, you're first, but you know, if Hunter's against you, then you're definitely last. Nami, we were all kind of even par. So it was tough to get that temperature check of like, do I like them as a person or do I like them as a player? And for mm. me, that's where I kind of fell in with Ben is when, you know, rubber hit the road. I really like, I, I think Ben is great. Like it's shown we have a really great connection out there. Like I endured their strong battles, but ultimately just from him not wanting to talk strategy with me, I'm like, I don't, I can't see this moving forward. So mm it's kind of separating out the I'm out here with these incredible, extraordinary humans, but maybe in this context, that's not the best thing to be out here with these extraordinary humans, because if they're more extraordinary than you, you know, that's not something you want to sit next to. Last thing I need to ask, can we get your official word on what's going on with the jumping? Because look, those that looked into your extracurriculars know yeah. you won a little show called Wipeout, which I believe does involve a hefty amount of jumping. So what happened here with the verticality? So I did release the footage of Wipeout and it's very clear that I am going like that. There is no verticality on Wipeout. It is falling intentionally. And I actually watched that episode with my dad and I turned to him after the jumping and I'm like, so, um, what'd you think? He just like, he just like, yeah, I knew that watch supporting you in basketball was one of the toughest things I've had to do when you were a kid. And I'm like, you know, you could have been nicer. You, you could have been nicer on that one, dad. 
Interesting. So uh, you were able to sort of not like conquer your fears, but at least push through something in the moment where you, you got that jump off. And granted, you didn't have to smash anything, but yeah. at least you got you got some fair height considering what we saw of you that day at the camp. So I guess the lessons worked out. Yeah, I mean, adrenaline's a hell of a drug, Mike Bloom. <laughs> well, I got a nice surge of adrenaline getting to speak with you. I always enjoy getting the chance to gab about all things. And obviously, Mariah, I wish we were talking in, you know, several weeks time, but I guess you do live on through Liz in a way. So I'm rooting for, you know, even if I'm talking with one redhead with glasses, uh, I'm so happy that we got the chance to speak and to, to see you play this game over the course of the past six weeks. Thank you. And I don't know if you did this intentionally, but um, how many episodes do we have left? How many? Uh, several, I believe, right? Exactly. Several. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm hoping we have several more chats from here to eternity. Thank you so much again, Mariah. All the best to you and yours. Likewise. Bye.